What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we got the iPad 8th generation right here in my hands and I'm gonna do a quick little unboxing and then I'm gonna talk about whether this iPad is for you or should you consider one of the higher level iPads such as the iPad Air and the iPad Pro or maybe you should consider buying something totally different. I'm gonna be looking at this from a student's perspective, see if it's any good for school, is it really usable or is it just a gimmick? So I got the iPad 2020 version here, the 8th gen, and this is in the silver and white color, and it's the 32 GB version. My knife. Now I also bought a stylus or an Apple Pencil knockoff from Amazon for around 40 bucks. First, let's talk about what's new about the iPad this year compared to the previous year. Well, literally, it's the exact same iPad except for one difference, and that's the processor. So the iPad upgraded from the old A10 Fusion chip to the new A12 Bionic chip. What does this mean? The new upgrade in the processor will give you better performance for daily tasks and keep the iPad pretty quick for years to come. It also gives you better graphical performance when you're trying to play games on this especially for a heavier game such as Asphalt 9 or PUBG or even Dead Trigger. Though you will notice some stutters but it still performs really well. Other than the performance boost from the new A12 chip, it's literally the same iPad from last year. Though it's still a pretty capable device in my opinion. So the main question for this iPad is, who is it for? Who should buy this iPad? Well, there are many uses for this iPad, but I think there are two main reasons why somebody would be looking at this iPad. Of course, somebody would be looking at this iPad because of budget reasons, you might be on a low budget. Watching your favorite shows and favorite movies on this iPad is a pleasure. The screen is pretty sharp and it also gets plenty bright. So when you're outside and trying to watch something, it'll be perfectly fine since it has 500 nits of brightness. The speakers have a nice amount of volume to it, though I wish they were a tad bit louder, but they are really clear and they have a good amount of bass, so voices sound pretty good and if you want to use it for music, the speakers are also really good for that. So the second is for students mainly looking to take notes or other basic school activity. If you have a paper-like screen protector on it paired with an Apple Pencil, then this can become a really powerful tool for students. With the iPad, note taking is so much easier. It's more organized, you have everything in one place and there's one pencil to do it all. With that one pencil, you can have many different colors, you can have different types of pens, markers, pencils, and you can even draw things like shapes, perfect shapes like that. There's no need to carry extra notebooks around for each class since all your notebooks are in one place. 
and there's no need to carry textbooks either since you can download PDF versions of your textbook and have that stored in your iPad and you won't even need to carry those textbooks around to class anymore. There's also this excitement about taking notes on the iPad. I can't really put it into words but it just makes you feel like you want to take notes on the iPads, like you look forward to taking notes on the iPad. There's just this little excitement about it. It's like, ooh, a new device for note taking. Now for most tasks for school, you can get away with the iPad, such as note taking or making Word documents or even presentations online. But there are some limitations. What you can do is more third party software. So things such as coding or a specific program that you need for like things like 3D designing, you're gonna be limited there. You can't download those. If there's something in the app store available, you can do that. But generally for coding or designing, you would want a computer for that. But if you don't need those things, then the iPad is a perfectly capable device for you. Now let's talk about the note taking experience. Right out of the box, the note taking experience is pretty good, but it can become better if you put a paper like screen protector on this. With that, it'll actually feel like you're writing on paper instead of writing on a glass display. And that makes a huge difference. I know people that are looking specifically at this iPad are probably on a budget and adding an Apple Pencil that's close to $100 isn't really budget friendly. So because of that, I decided to buy a cheap alternative from Amazon for around 40 Canadian dollars and I decided to test that out and see if those actually work fine or is there a big difference between the Apple Pencil and a cheap alternative. What I noticed was that for regular note taking, it's perfectly fine. You don't really you know, notice any difference or anything like that. But if you're an artist looking to draw on the iPad, you would want to go with the Apple Pencils since it has more pro features. If you want to draw, then I highly suggest you to upgrade to the pro models with a better screen. But with this $40 pencil, it performs pretty well. Right out of the box, you just have to turn it on. You don't connect it with Bluetooth. Just turn it on and write as if you would write with your fingers. So the pencil itself feels pretty good in the hands. It's similar to the Apple Pencil second generation. You charge it via USB cable. Now I found the palm rejection in this iPad to be really good. It works like 95% of the times. I barely had any issues with the palm rejection on this iPad. It actually works amazingly. Overall, for note taking or basic school activities, I definitely recommend this iPad to a student who's on a budget and not looking to get a traditional laptop. It's really intuitive and it has great features such as multitasking that really make your workflow more productive and more efficient. You could also buy a Bluetooth keyboard case on Amazon for pretty cheap and of course that'll make things like typing Word documents or making presentations much easier and overall improve your workflow. Well, that's it for this review. Thank you guys for watching. If you found value in this video, then hit that like button and subscribe for more content. Let me know what you guys think about the iPad 8 generation in the comments down below. I'm interested to hear what you guys think.